Welcome to Coffee with a Googler. Today I'm meeting with Alex Danillo to talk about web standards and why they're so important. So, Lomo, so tell me, um, with all these interviews and stuff, have you actually learned anything useful? Have I learned anything useful? Wow, I've certainly I've learned how hot it can be in a studio. Right. <laughs> no, but seriously, I, I've like it's been really fun to chat with a lot of like different and various Googlers from around the world and from different things that they do. Uh, like I had Josh Gordon on for one episode where we spoke about machine learning, and machine learning is something that I've been trying to study and having a lot of trouble with. It's complicated. It's really complicated and my math days are like 20 years behind me and uh, one of the things that Josh spoke about is like how he's teaching machine learning and trying not to be so mathy about it and you know that that really helped and uh, we had Anchor Cotwell on on a recent episode and he was like talking a lot about Google Maps and Santa Tracker and a lot of behind the scenes of Santa Tracker and the stuff that he built and I learned how important it is to have a good project manager and you'll have to watch the episode to see what we mean about that. Cool, I'll watch it. Sounds good. And I was actually thinking about you the other day when I read this quote and it was, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, I may have it wrong, but it was something along the lines of like, you know, the great thing about standards is that there's so many of them to choose from. And I know you're working on standards. And was that an Andrew Tannenbaum quote? That or was, that was that? his so, quote. Yeah, definitely. Now, now you're working on standards and you're working on web standards in particular for Google. And it's like, what's the status of the web today? How are things going with the web and how are things going with standards? Well, that's a great question. Um, there's a lot of activity in standards. I mean, there are multiple groups, there are multiple working groups, as you know. Um, right. Personally, I'm working on the HTML standard at the moment, so okay. I'm helping edit the spec with a bunch of colleagues from other companies. And uh, the way I kind of view it is standards are really important, because without standards, things don't work, right? If I yeah. write a web page and I just kind of bash the mark up together, it might work in my browser, but it won't work in other browsers. And the way it works across browsers is through standards, right? So that the browsers implement the same thing, and if I implement my page, adhering to the standard, it'll work everywhere, right? And, and it's important to get things working the same way everywhere, right? I, I remember Absolutely. the old story about, wasn't it like a Mars mission where the Europeans measured it in metric and we measured it in imperial, yeah. and instead of landing, that thing Slammed went splat. Yeah, and that was the, it, all over. Whoops. <laughs> same thing happened uh, quite a long time ago with the Fortran program as well. Where, like, you know, people decided to use Fortran for like one of the space probes from NASA, and okay. somebody put a comma where there should have been a full stop, or vice versa, and the, probe went flying off into space because it had a variable that wasn't being used. It was just oh, accidental. No. And now the space program doesn't use Fortran anymore. And so Is that why? Switched. Well, probably that. <laughs> so what have they switched to? Most likely ADA. Okay. That is a military standard, in fact. Uh, so standards are important from a lot of different aspects. Like, you know, just for developers, you know, you kind of think, yeah, great. Why have them? Right? Yeah. Andrew Tannenbaum's right. There's a zillion of them out there. But like a perfect example is in the old days of the railroad, back you know, like 1800s or whatever it mm-hmm. was. There were competing companies building their own railroad tracks, but they were different widths. Oh, no. So you get to the state border and you wouldn't be able to continue with the train because they didn't have a standard gauge. And hence they brought in standard gauge. I see. So it's the same with the web. You know, we define a set of standards. Every browser vendor builds those standards into their browser. So when I build for the standard, I can expect it to work everywhere. Okay. And if it doesn't, it's a bug, right? Right. So you don't want to be that train that fits one railroad but not the other. Exactly, yeah. So, so what exactly does your role entail? What are you doing? What we're doing, well, you know, what I'm doing is basically working with a bunch of the other folks on the HTML group, and we collate all the changes that people submit to us, like the working group works together, but it's an open development process. So like, for example, if you're a web developer and you come up with some brilliant idea that you want in the spec, you can talk about it, you can bring it to what we call the web incubation community group. Mm-hmm. You can work on this, on the kind of idea there, develop it, and then if it becomes kind of stable, we'll pull it into the standard. So as editors, it's our job to write the words, put it into the spec, make sure it's testable, right. and then it'll go through the process and eventually become a, a real browser feature. HTML5 was the most recent big spec that everybody's been hearing yeah. about. And both. Yeah. What's next? What, what's well, the next is 5.1, which 5.1, I'm working okay. on at the moment. And um, 5.1 is kind of interesting. It's a refinement of 5.0 in many ways. The, there are a number of new things and there are a number of things being dropped. So one good example of a feature that's being dropped is called Request Autocomplete. Okay. So that was a feature for payments on the web, which was great on mobile devices and it's shipped in Chrome. So it's shipped to stable browsers. However, the uptake by the community and developers has been really low. So we're like, well, other browsers aren't doing it. 
this is not a feature we would want developers to try and use because it's just not prevalent everywhere, so we're pulling it. So 5.1 will actually make the spec closer to reality. That's kind of an, a big aim for 5.1. Right. Now, given that the you know, we're moving more and more mobile and we're moving more and more towards apps instead of like desktops with browsers and our internet information access is coming through apps, what impact is that having on standards or are standards becoming less important? I think standards are important for different reasons. Like the app thing is important in its own right, but we've kind of seen a huge wave of adoption of the app stores and all, all this sort of thing in Google Play, etc. However, the way I look at it as a you know, more web-focused person is that you know, apps are great, like I've written apps myself, mm -hmm. right? but there are something like two million odd apps in the store. So if I'm gonna find something, the discovery is really, really difficult, right? The story of discoverability on apps is terrible. And I can only install a few on my phone, right? You know, right. I'd be lucky to install a hundred. And so from the point of view of usability, I'd only install apps that I really, really need, that I'll use every day. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you switch back to kind of the web focus, uh, with the web, you can basically go to this site and that site. In fact, you can go to millions of sites without installing anything on your phone. You just go through the browser. So the beauty of that is that I can go, well, today I'm going to go to this shopping store, use their site, buy their stuff, and tomorrow I can go to this other store and I don't have to clutter my screen with little icons. Right, I see. And, and you can even do things also, you can put like a link to those stores on your home screen anyway f via their website, right? That's right. In fact, uh, we have um, installed a home screen. Chrome has a feature. In fact, many mobile browsers have the same feature where if you visit a site a few times, the browser goes, hey, you like this thing. Would you like me to stick an icon on your home screen? Right. If you say yes, it'll put a little icon there. And then from the user's point of view, next time they click on it, it just looks like an app to them. So they can't actually tell the difference between an installed app and just a website. Got it. So browsers are effectively becoming more app-like in some ways, or sites on browsers. They are. In fact, uh, modern browsers, like the, you know, when you're talking about standards, I'll just rewind a little bit. Like if you run back, say, 10 years, mm -hmm. right? there used to be a standard called WAP. Okay. Right? So it was, I remember WAP. You remember WAP. See, a lot of people remember it. I won't talk about some of the <laughs> quotes about WAP, not here anyway. Uh, but WAP was a standard, right? And it shipped on a ton of mobile devices, like hundreds of thousands, and you know, even millions, sorry. Uh, so that standard lasted for quite a while, but it was really primitive. It was geared to the mobile devices at the time. Fast forward 10 years, we're in the smartphone era where the thing in your pocket is like a supercomputer from a long time ago, mm -hmm. and the browser is full featured. It's as powerful as a desktop browser. And so the shift to mobile is not just a shift into new styles of browsers with new capabilities, but the power there gives you all this stuff that we didn't have before that you usually associate with native apps. Like for example, um, accelerometers, like you have the um, device orientation API. So I can flip my phone around and, and actually play a game with a ball rolling yeah. in my browser. Yeah, right. nice. You know, another feature that we've brought into the standards um, is the battery API. So from a web page, I can actually detect the status of my battery so I can choose to throttle back if I know I'm not on a charger and stuff like that. So uh, the capabilities coming to the browsers mm. are getting closer to what's available to native app developers but this has all come through standards development and not through some kind of proprietary edition. Right, and, and, and assume then if I'm building according to those standards, it's gonna run on the browser on multiple platforms also. That's right. So I don't need to build one app for Android and one app for iPhone and one app maybe for other platforms. Exactly, right? that's the beauty of the web. You build it one place and it runs on all the devices. Very no, cool. compl no compilation necessary. <laughs> Very cool. Now, one of, one of the things that, it's been a few years since I was a web developer, I'll admit, but uh, one of the things that when, when I was building a web and it was like, I had to have standards, in not just the back of my mind, but I had to have standards at the front of my mind. But sometimes it felt like somebody was imposing a way of doing things that on, onto me without me without being part of my natural workflow. Yeah. Now, do we have like tools or things that will help developers through that and help developers so that they can make the most of building to standards? There are quite a number of tools. Um, one of the things of developing the standards is it's, we have to build tests, right? So right. whenever these days when we bring in a new feature, we have to prove that it's testable and we have to write the tests. And so part of that is also the W3C have a, a site called validator.w3.org and it's an online validator where you can put your markup in and it will check it for you and tell you if you're adhering to the standards, which at least saves you time as a developer. Yep. Right. They have a bunch of other tools that check CSS. They also check mobile sites that will actually render in different screen sizes and give you the result so cool. you can see what your site will look like. So there are a lot of uh, things like that. There's also a community effort um, called Test the Web Forward, 
Oh, test right? the web forward. Test the web forward. So this I started like a few years ago. And what it is, is it's, an, it's kind of bringing the developer community to get together to multi-day events where we sit around and we write tests for browser features, specifically testing things that don't work <laughs> across the browsers. Right. So like the whole point of a test is like write it like this works in Safari, this doesn't work in Chrome or something like that. So these tests are built and we've run them in Paris, I think in San Francisco, in Tokyo, in Sydney, all over the world, right? Nice. And this is kind of a grassroots effort to make the browsers more compatible. And the more compatible the browsers become, the easier your life is as a developer. And the easier life is as a consumer as well, right? Absolutely. So you don't have any of that. Yeah, you know, differences. So one of the things then is, that, how about Google? We do have some developer websites, right? For we do. We have Web Fundamentals, which contains a lot of great guidance. Um, there's quite a lot of focus on mobile, what to do for mobile, but just general web development stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of resources like that. Cool. And of course, Google sends engineers to like all sorts of standards bodies. You know, I work with the Chrome engineers. You know, part of my role is not just working with the HTML committee and the group doing the editing. It's also talking to Chrome engineers and getting their feedback and saying, hey, guys, this is broken, or hey, this would be a cool feature to implement. And part of that's a two-way street, right? It's not a one-way conversation. Cool. Well, we're just about out of time. So cool. that was awesome. I've learned so much. And it's uh, you've convinced me to look at more into the web. The web is great. It's great. I know it's great, but you've convinced me more looking at web mobile apps as well, instead of just yeah. building a native app. So thanks, Alex. So if you have any questions for me, or if you have any questions for Alex, just please leave them in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to the Google Developers channel. Thank you.